ready-made maths YouTube training videos. Teacher and teaching assistant mathematics training. This week, as we did yesterday, we're continuing to look at mastery in place value. Yesterday, we looked at decimal place value to one decimal place. We're developing that today and looking at decimal place value to two decimal places. The main resource that you're going to see today is base 10 and how base 10 can be used rather than being used for hundreds, tens and ones. It can actually also be used really effectively in upper key stage two to let children see two decimal places. We can use the holes, the tenths and the hundreds. So I hope you find the activities useful uh, and you've got plenty of things that you'll be able to take back with you uh, and use in class uh, in key stage two. Hello and welcome back to this week's work on decimal place value. Yesterday, we started the week by looking at uh, decimal uh, place value to one decimal place. We looked at using tens frames mainly and Numicon, and we also looked at the decimal place value chart. We kept the same principles that we've been looking at throughout all of the training uh, that we've been looking at over the past month, the principles of CPA. We start with something in the concrete, it then becomes pictorial before we move to the abstract. It's taken it completely differently to kind of the old style teaching of we're gonna teach you something on the board, and then possibly we'll look at what it actually looks like uh, on, a, uh, on a table or using apparatus. What we are doing with all of the mastery is looking at the actual apparatus first. Let's get a picture of decimal place value and then let's transfer it over to paper or onto the board. Yesterday we looked at decimal place value to one decimal place. We're going to extend that today. We're going to be looking at decimal place value to two decimal places. We're going to look at two main resources. Very, very briefly, I'm going to show you the abacus uh, and then we're going to look at base 10. Uh, and again, that idea we talked about yesterday of taking an image that children are familiar with, yesterday it was the tens frame, and then applying it further up the school in a slightly different context. We're going to be doing that with base 10 uh, today. But let me just start off with uh, the Slavonic Abacus. Again, a resource that I've been using a lot uh, in the past uh, few weeks. And in fact, very, very shortly, there's going to be a whole series of videos, just short little mini videos on using uh, the Abacus that you'll be able to watch uh, at your leisure. Um, how do we use the abacus for decimal place value? Well, first of all, what do we look at in year one when we first look at uh, the abacus? Well, we've got the rows of 10, we've got, row, we've got groups of 25, uh, and we've got sections uh, overall of 100. Obviously, we've got 10 tens, 10, 20, 30, etc. But what we've definitely got on here are 100 beads. 100 beads that make up the abacus. Now, if I want to think of that as a place value activity for year one, two, we're looking at the number 24. There's two tens and four ones. What we're now going to do is look at the same activity done uh, as a decimal. So how does this number uh, work as a decimal? Well, first of all, let's just go back to the 100. What have we got there? We've got 100 beads out of 100. We've in effect got 100 hundredths. We could even think of it as a percentage. Each of those is 1%. The whole frame is 100%. So I can think of this in many different ways. I can think of it as fractions, where each of the uh, sets of beads or each of the lines is a tenth uh, of the whole. Uh, we can think of it as a percentage, where that, as we looked at, is 24 out of 100, or 24%. Let's think of that, therefore, as a decimal. What are we looking at? Well, we are looking at 24 hundredths. 24%, 24 out of 100, or 0 0.1, as we looked at yesterday, is one tenth. 0.2, as we also looked at yesterday, is 2 tenths. 0.3 would be 3 tenths, but we're not looking at 0.3, we're looking at 0.24. So what we've actually got is 1 tenth, 2 tenths, and an extra 4 hundredths, or 24 hundredths. 24 out of 100, 24 hundredths, 2 tenths, and 4 hundredths. How many whole frames have we got? None. We've got 0 0.124. So what we're looking at is, is a brilliant resource that can be used for many different numbers. If I make this number here, in year one, that number is 36. Three tens and six ones, 36 ones. By year five, or, you know, we were looking at it again and thinking, actually, it's still 36, but it's 36 out of 100. It's 36 hundredths. It's 36%. It's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.36. 36 hundredths, 3 tenths uh, and 6 hundredths. As we develop it to bigger numbers, well, they're only bigger decimal numbers, but let's have a look what we've got there. Year 1, 50, 67. 
by year four or five. Wait a minute, it's still 67, but it's 67 out of 100. It's therefore 67 hundredths. It's 67% in year five and six. And it's also 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's my half, which is 0 0.5. And there's another 17 hundredths. Altogether, I've got 67 hundredths. So just one more for you to look at. We'll pause the video. Let me just make, I want to make a number from the bottom this time. And we're using it from somewhere else. I want to look at this number that I'm making from the bottom. Let's just pull them across there. And just let us have a look. Uh, let's go for that number there. So we'll look at this number here. Uh, and actually, you can also look at this number. Let's look at both numbers and discuss each of those two numbers as fractions, percentages, but most importantly, decimals. So the great thing is the abacus does allow us just to create decimal numbers really quick or percentages or fractions, but only out of 100. We can't do three decimal places. We can certainly do one or two. Let's look at this number first of all. Well, this number is 0 0.1234. 6, 0.46, because it's 46 out of 100, 46 hundredths, 46%. The other number, I can see straight away is a half there. I can see my half, or 0.5, or 50 out of 100, or 50%. But what I can now see, I've got an extra 4 hundredths. So I've got 54 out of 100. I've got 54%. But as a decimal, I've got 0.5, 4. 5 tenths and 4 hundredths, 54 hundredths. 5 tenths and 4 hundredths, 54 hundredths. Four tenths and six hundreds, forty six hundreds. Four tenths and six hundreds, forty six hundreds. Practice that regularly. Make different numbers. Two tenths and three hundreds, twenty three hundreds, no point two three. Um, three tenths and one hundred, thirty one hundreds, no point three one. Seven tenths and eight hundreds, seventy eight hundreds, no point seven eight. And let's go right towards the end. We've got nine tenths and nine hundredths, ninety nine hundredths, naught point nine nine, and an extra hundredth, and we end up with uh, one whole, or a hundred hundredths, or a hundred percent. So what we're going to do now is we're going to backtrack a little bit because obviously I've come straight in at all of the hundredths and we've looked at the decimals, the fractions, and percentages together. As I mentioned yesterday, we cannot really cover decimals until we've done fractions. And so I would expect before the children did any of these activities on decimal place value that they've been taught a block on fractions. They've already talked about tenths and hundredths. They've looked at the number of hundredths. We'd use the abacus for that particular purpose or other resources. And then we move to decimals and we reapply and we talk about it, you know, in a, an additional way. So we're now going to look at the table and I've just set out three different types of um, base 10 image. I've got one. Um, so two images at the back where I'm using um, the hundreds and the tens, which we're going to redefine shortly. I've got some in the middle where I'm just using the tenths, sorry, the tens, which again, I'm going to redefine uh, shortly. And then I've got something at the front, a little bit like we did last week uh, for the four digit place value. I've just got a pile of ones. What we're going to do now is we're going to, we're going to build on all those activities. I'm going to redefine them and look at them uh, from a decimal point of view. Let's start off just by looking at what we've got here. I've just talked about redefining uh, what, we've, what we've actually got. Now, what I would first of all probably say to the children, exactly like with the abacus, that we're now going to imagine that this, which originally was the hundred piece, is now representing our whole. This is one. This is one whole, one whole piece. Therefore, if that's one whole, and again, this links back to the fractions work, what would this piece represent? And we can even put it on top. And if you get base 10 that joins, it's even better because you can actually put it on top. If that is my whole, I can see the green piece used to be a 10 it's now one tenth one tenth of the whole let's put another one on and i can now see that's two tenths and hopefully and again we'll have done this with all the resources we looked at yesterday but we're now out of a hundred we're now looking at this and seeing actually that's my whole and i can now see one two three four five tenths but i'm not just looking at tenths anymore i'm looking at tenths but i'm also looking at hundreds at the same time if I just take those off, I can see that this piece, obviously, in key stage one, was worth 100. It's now worth one whole or 100%, but you can see it's split uh, into 100 pieces. Therefore, what is this tenth also worth? This tenth is also worth 10 hundreds. And I can see that because there's 10 out of 100, but there's one uh, piece out of 10. As I introduce the second one, I can see straight away that's two out of 10, but it's also 20 out of 100. 
So I can see from this that two tenths is not just two tenths, it's also 20 hundredths. Three tenths is 30 hundredths. Think back to key stage one. Three tens, 30. Three tenths, 30 hundredths. In key stage one, this was four tens were 40. It's now four tenths, which is worth 40 out of the hundred. And then we reach my favourite one, and we've got all the different maths that's coming together. Again, we looked at decimal place value for one decimal place yesterday, but we're now looking kind of at two decimal places. We've got one, two, three, four, five tenths. We don't even need to count them. We can see that it's halfway. It's five tenths. It's five out of ten, but it's also 50 out of 100. So five tenths, or 0 0.5, is 50 hundredths. You've got so much uh, different mathematics just by looking at that particular piece. Let's now just think of it purely from a decimal point of view. So I'm just take that away. Let's say we've now established that this is my whole and these are my tenths. We're not going to go into the hundreds now. We're just going to initially start off just with the tenths. What have I got there? I've got five tenths. I can see there are five tenths that make up my whole. Moving on to the next one. How many holes have I got? Well, I can see. I've set them out in five and a bit style. If I do put them together, I can see that uh, I'm not quite at one hole yet. What I've actually got are seven tenths. I've got five there and two there, set out in five and a bit style. I've got seven tenths or no holes and seven tenths, naught point seven. No holes, seven tenths, naught point seven. Yesterday, we looked at these exact numbers, but yesterday we looked at them with tens frames and with Numicon. We looked at 0 0.5 as being no holes and five tenths, which is no different to today. We've got no hole pieces, so we've got none of these, but we do have five tenths. So exactly like yesterday, uh, we've got uh, no holes and five tenths. What we've also got now, though, is the idea that we've got a number of hundreds as well. And we're going to look at that one in a lot more detail shortly. So we actually have got 50 hundreds. Five tenths is 50 hundreds when we look at it as an overall 100 piece or 100 percent we then moved on to the seven tenths and yesterday it just was no holes and seven uh, tenths what we've looked at now is that, that seven tenths also has a value of 70 uh, hundreds now conventionally you don't write 0 0.70 or 0 0.50 but you definitely talk about that with the children and reason as to why and we can obviously you can visualize it straight away why 0 0.5 is not just worth five tenths but it's also worth 50 hundreds and eventually 500 uh, thousands uh, and so on. So what we're going to do now is take two more numbers that we looked at yesterday, 1.8 and 2.4. I want you to imagine what will that look like with base 10? What will that look like with base 10? What would be the value in holes, in tenths, and also what would the value be in hundreds? So have a look at the numbers. Let's think about what they would look like as a visual. Now let's look on the table. Let's start off uh, with the, this one here. Again, I've set that one out uh, in the five and a bit style. I could I've put it like that as well, as long as I can see it as five and a bit. Again, as I've mentioned many times, as soon as I put them together, it's so much harder to read. So I'm gonna leave that little space. Uh, what have I got now? What I've got now is one hole. I've definitely got one hole, but I've now got an extra eight tenths. So I've got one hole and eight tenths. I've also got 18 tenths, but I've also got 1.8. So one hole and 8 tenths, 18 tenths, 1.8. That's similar to yesterday, but we've now got a value in the hundreds as well. How many hundreds have we got? Well, there's a hundred hundreds there. There's an extra 50 hundreds there, and there's an extra 30 hundreds there. So we've actually got 180, as we always had as a three digit number. That 180 is now the number of hundreds. We've got 180 hundreds. We've got 18 tenths. So we've got one hole and eight tenths. We've got 10 tenths here and another eight tenths over here. So we've got 18 tenths. We've also got 180 hundreds. It's amazing how that same visual can be used to represent and talk and discuss three different things. And the children can actually see it as well. As we move to the second number, what can we actually see? Well, we can see two holes and four tenths just like yesterday. That will give us 24 tenths or 2.4. Two holes and four tenths, again, 2.4. What about the number of hundreds? Well, what have we got in hundreds? We've got 
um, 200 hundreds there, and we've got another 40 hundreds there. So we've got 240 hundreds. So we've got all those different values. We've got two holes and four tenths. We've got uh, 24 tenths, 10, 24, and we've got 240 hundreds. We've got 2.4. That has got to be done many, 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 many times so that children get used to using that language and transferring their key stage one understanding of 240 uh, to a key stage two understanding of 240 hundreds. Two holes and four tenths, 2.4. Uh, and so on. So let's take that idea now and let's now go kind of properly into uh, two decimal places. So let's have a look now at some decimal place value to definitely to two decimal places. Let's look down at the table and again what you'll see now is at the moment there are no holes. I can put a hole next to it and see that this is definitely not one hole yet on any of these uh, particular numbers. So let's start with the first number. What have we got on this first number over here? Well, we've definitely not got one hole, but we've definitely got a tenth. We've got a tenth and we've got an extra six hundredths. So I was to, and I say normally I leave it in five and a bit, but what I'm going to do now is put, put, put them together like that. What have I got all together? I've got sixteen hundredths. I can I suppose I can show it either way. Uh, sixteen hundredths. So sixteen hundredths. How many holes? None. How many tenths? One. How many hundredths? Six or sixteen. So I've got 0 0.16 or 16 uh, hundreds, 10 hundreds there, 6 hundreds there, 1 tenth and 6 hundreds, 16 hundreds. Again, we'll transfer that shortly over to the place value chart. Look at the next one. Let's just pause on these two. And again, let's just think about those questions. How many whole tenths, call them, which is the word whole, but how many tenths can you see? How many individual uh, hundreds can you see? And how many hundreds do we have uh, all together? In both of those pictures, let's just pause the video now. Let's take a look at this first one. Well, we can definitely see five, six tenths and three hundredths. There are no holes, so it's a zero number of holes. So it's 0 0.563. No holes, six tenths and three hundredths, but actually 63 hundredths. Let's just check, we put them together as if they were on a hundred square. You've got 60 hundredths and another three hundredths. I can even put them on top of the hundred square, which is quite nice uh, onto there and I can see uh, that hundred square, which is my hole. I've not got a hole, but I've got six tenths there, three hundredths there, 63 hundredths, naught point six three. If I go to the next one, the same idea. I haven't got a hole yet. I'm almost there though. I've got five tenths or a half, another two tenths. So I've got seven tenths and I've got eight hundredths, but all together, if I put them together, oops, just like that. I've got 75, 78, so I can see there we've got 78 hundreds. Again, just to prove it, put them on top of here. I've got my 78, 74. And again, just to double check, we can ask the children to prove that it's eight. And we know that because it's two away from that line of 10. So I've got 20, 40, 60, 78 hundreds and 22 hundreds away from a hole, but it's 0 0.78. Not no holes, seven tenths, eight hundreds, seventy eight hundreds, zero point seven eight, no point seven eight. Make sure all that language is used over and over again until it becomes second nature for the children to see how many tenths, how many hundreds, how many hundreds all together. Let's have a look then. I've just chosen one of the numbers, the 0 0.16. Here we can see that number. There are no holes, there's one tenth and six hundreds are all together. 16 hundreds. Let's look at that on a place value chart. No holes, one tenth, six hundreds, 16 hundreds, naught point one six. The other two examples we looked at were 63 hundreds, naught point six three, which was six tenths and three hundreds. And then we moved on to naught point seven eight, which was no holes, seven tenths, eight hundreds, 78 hundreds. You can see how when you've done it practically, this all suddenly makes sense. You're basically taking everything you've done on the table or on the desk or in a group, you're putting it up onto a board and we can make sense out of it. What does that mean? It means seven tenths and eight hundreds, 78 hundreds. So we're gonna finish this session now just by going beyond one uh, and looking at slightly bigger decimal numbers uh, to two decimal places. 
So to develop and build on that concept, I've now created three numbers on the table that are using the holes, the tenths and the hundredths that used to be hundreds, tens and ones. Um, what we often have in class though, we often get, you know, go into our place value cupboard and find a real kind of mishmash of different colours. So what I've deliberately done for this activity is I've mixed and matched between two different sets uh, of place value equipment. Um, I'm using the standard one that many schools have, which, with the, which has the blue, the blue hundreds, the green tens and the yellow ones. But I'm also using the kind of the Singapore maths uh, style colours from Maths No Problem, uh, which have got the orange hundreds, the red tens and the white ones. And I've kind of mixed and matched them, as you often have to do, uh, using the place value equipment uh, in the cupboards. So have a look down at these three numbers now that you can see. Um, actually, I'm lying. There's four numbers. One, two, three, four. Let's look at the four numbers. Uh, that we can now see there's number the first one here's the second one here's the third one and here's the fourth one and i'd like you to think of them as decimal numbers with these being the holes with these being the tenths and with these being the hundreds all of the different things we've talked about today i'm going to pause the video just jot down everything that you can see discuss and talk about for each of those four numbers So here's the first number. Take a good look at that one and discuss what you can see from there. We'll move over to the second number. Again, have a look at that one. Holes, tenths and hundreds. How would you see that one as a decimal? Moving over to the third number. Again, let's have a look at the holes, the tenths and the hundreds. Just talk about and visualise and write down all the different things you can talk about uh, with that particular number. And then finally, let's look at this uh, final number that we've got here. A little bit harder to see, need a bit more space uh, on that one. Have a look at that number, it's a much bigger number, and just discuss that one as wholes, tenths and hundreds uh, and as a decimal. Let's look at the first one. What do we see? Well, what we see is one whole two tenths and four hundredths, 1.24, or 124 hundredths, or 12 tenths and four hundredths. Many ways we can talk about that one. As we move to the second one, as a very simple decimal, it's 2.57. We've used that five and a bit arrangement again. Two holes, five tenths, seven hundredths, 2.57, 25 tenths and seven hundredths, or 257 hundredths. So we can go as deep as we want with the children in their explanation of what they can see. The third one, what can we see? We can see four holes, we can see eight tenths, and we can see three hundredths. How many actual tenths are there really? Well, there's actually 48 tenths, uh, and then three hundredths, and how many hundredths altogether? Well, there's 483. So it's 4.83, four holes, eight tenths, and three hundredths, 48 tenths and three hundredths, 483 hundredths, so much stuff there. And moving to the final one, again because of that five and a bit arrangement, we can see straight away there are seven whole numbers. There are then four tenths and there are then six hundredths. 7.46, how many tenths altogether? 74, so 74 tenths and six hundredths. How many hundredths? 746. So it's all that key stage one place value and lower key stage two adapted to decimal numbers. Let's very quickly look at the four numbers that we just made and how the work on the table and the concrete transfers over to the abstract. We made 1.24, one whole, two tenths and four hundredths, 124 hundredths. We made 2.57, two holes, five tenths and seven hundredths, 25 tenths. Uh, and seven hundreds or 257 hundreds etc same with 4.83 and the same with 7.46 we had seven holes four tenths six hundreds we had all together 74 tenths and six hundreds and we actually had 746 hundreds so that's how we can develop children's place value understanding we've got something physical and practical that they can manipulate again they can be drawn relatively easy uh, the ones can be drawn with uh, a hole the tenths can be drawn like that, and the hundreds can be drawn uh, like that. So in effect, I've got there, I'll just put an extra one on, I've got 1.34 if I want to do it as a pictorial version uh, as well. Um, 
Hope you've found the uh, decimal uh, activities useful. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, obviously in future training sessions, we're also going to be looking at how that uh, is relevant to fractions uh, as well. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the sessions that we've delivered uh, so far on decimal place value. As I said last week with the normal place value work, obviously there is so much more we could do. Uh, what we haven't done, we haven't looked at place value counters. We only briefly looked at the abacus. Uh, we looked at a little bit of work with Numicon. Uh, we can obviously develop that into decimals in the real in the real world using uh, money, for example, or using uh, grams and kilograms and meters and centimeters and so on. So that can definitely be developed further, but as pure decimal activities, the main uh, principle of what we've been looking at today and we've been looking at throughout all of the place value training is CPA. Let's see it with concrete materials. Let's manipulate it in different ways. Uh, let's move it around. Uh, let's talk about it, let's regroup, let's exchange, but let's keep it practical and then move over to the board so that what we're actually writing actually makes sense based on something we've already seen. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, what we're going to be doing for the rest of this week is moving on to other elements uh, of mathematics other than decimal place value. Um, as I say, thanks very much uh, and I'll see you all tomorrow. So as we've just seen, decimal place value uh, in two decimal places. This is a par partition in wall chart from the uh, sense of number uh, place value policy. We've looked at quite a few of these last week and there are examples uh, in the place value policy of single digit numbers all the way uh, to decimals. So if you are using uh, these examples in class, these are A3 uh, wall charts that can be printed out uh, and put up uh, onto the wall uh, as part of your working wall. Let's take a look at the different images of 6.25. The obvious image that you can see at the top left hand corner uh, is the arrow card. You'll see an arrow card on all of the different uh, examples and all the different numbers. But obviously the arrow card tells you nothing about the number other than how it partitions into a basic way. 6, 0 0.2 and 0 0.05. What the children need to know, and as we've talked about throughout these sessions, is what the actual value is. Well that's 6, you can see it is the 6 holes represented by the 6 ones. The 0 0.2 is 2 tenths, and you can see that here as 0 0.1 twice, and also as two individual tenths. And here we've got 0 0.05 or 5 hundredths. And again, represented with 0 0.01 five times, but also the five individual hundredths uh, made with base 10. So what we need to do, as we've been talking throughout the session, is make sure that this, the 6.25, has got a visual value that the children really understand whether that's made with the actual apparatus, so you can see the hundreds and the tenths uh, and, uh, and the whole, or whether it's just done with place value counters once the children understand it. Uh, again, we've got a number line which shows where 6.25 is between zero and 10, uh, and also shows where 6.25 is between zero, sorry, it means between six and seven. Uh, finally, there's a place value chart, and quite nice to see it done uh, with money, because obviously with money, it's six pound coins, but the 20 isn't two tens, it's now a 20 pence, and the five isn't five ones, it's a five pence. That does develop uh, into three decimal places. We haven't really looked at those uh, on the training. Uh, again, straight away, you can see the 2.357. Um, we haven't really got an image of thousands, so instead we've just used for this one, uh, the decimal place value counters. This time set out, rather than in a five style that you see here, the five and a bit, this time set out in Numicon style. So you can see the two, uh, the 0.3, uh, you can see uh, the five hundreds, and you can see the seven uh, thousands. So hopefully, you know, if you're looking for something that you can put on, uh, you know, um, your your working wall, uh, and you're developing it up to two uh, and three decimal places, um, the place value wall charts are quite effective and a really good uh, resource to use. And this is the program for the remainder of this week. We've now finished um, the place value training. Uh, we've done seven days of place value training. And we've seen the key images that are really helpful uh, for children to use across the school uh, from single digits, two digits, up to four digits, and also uh, into decimals. Uh, from tomorrow onwards, we're gonna be looking at mental multiplication strategies. That will take a number of days. I don't quite know how many, because obviously there's a range of different strategies and some of them will take longer than others um, to develop. But we're gonna be looking at reordering, partitioning, round and adjust, lots of different doubling and halving strategies. We're going to manipulate the calculation. We're going to look at factorising and a little activity at the end on multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1,000 uh, called jump. 
So please join me uh, for those um, over the next um, over the course of this week, uh, and again uh, over the course of the weeks following half term. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow.